Hey guys, how's it going? So it's been a little while since we've done a little review video showing off some of the latest mods over on mod.io. So let's check out a few things that have been released in the last month or so that caught my eye and might be something you would be interested in. Now we're going to start really simple with a mod that honestly probably needs so many, many more downloads. Uh, this one is by Hieronymus and it is simply AI not asking for alliances. As we all know, alliances are basically useless, and if you didn't know, well, now you do. Uh, alliances are useless in Anno 1800. The only benefit they really give you is they let you use your allies' repair stations or repair cranes. That's it. That's all it does, really. The AI in this game does not think tactically. It does not think in terms of, oh, I need to go support my ally while we're fighting a common enemy. No, they just still do their own normal thing. Alliances, honestly, are a big risk because if you're in an alliance with someone and they go to war with someone else that you're actually friendly with, maybe you even have an alliance or trade agreement with them, you either have to go to war and destroy your reputation with someone that you actually liked, or you can also decline to go to war with them, but it will break the alliance and it will devastate your reputation by up to 40 or 50 points. It's really terrible. So basically, we don't like alliances. However, the AI likes to spam us with alliance requests and Hieronymus's mod simply removes that from happening. We no longer get spammed with requests to make alliances. And if you decline alliance, you actually get a negative reputation modifier. So this removes that entire ordeal. So if you hate the AI bothering you for those, go ahead, grab this mod, give it a thumbs up, from for Hieronymus putting this out there for us and making diplomacy a little bit easier to bear. Now, this next mod we have coming up by Tabenegriff is actually a bug fix mod that is really, really important to anyone running Empire of the Skies DLC. In Empire of the Skies, you have two new resources. You have bauxite and aluminum. Now, normally, Isabella Sarmento will sell aluminum to you and Archie would normally be selling bauxite. However, due to a bug in the game, once you reach what is considered end-game milestone, that is 1,000 investors and 25,000 global population, a bug kicks in which removes those goods from their trading posts. As you can see, Archie, of course, has no bauxite, and Isabella has no aluminum profiles for sale. So it is a problem. However, thanks to Tabenegriff, we have the Bauxite and Aluminum at in-game stage mod. Again, this is just a fix. So once you subscribe to it and get back into the game. So now Archie has his Bauxite and Isabel has the Aluminum profiles back. Now do be aware if you get this mod, it can take about a minute or two for the goods to show up in their, in their offer menu. So then you'll have access to these goods again in case you just want to buy them and not have to produce them yourself. Now, next up, we have three new buildings from Alt Mark Willy One. Now, he has given us a cobbler, a city bakery, and a city butcher. Now, the butcher and the bakery are self-explanatory. These are more urban versions of the butcher and the bakery that we currently have in the game right now. And they kind of fit in a little bit better with an artisan city and like maybe a little downtown area. The third building is a brand new uh, resource called the cobbler. And it produces shoes. Now, what are shoes? Shoes are used for artisans. And they give you 10 happiness and 30 coins. And for workers, who will give you another 10 happiness and 10 coins. So these people really, really love their shoes. So great little additions right here. Absolutely love these building models. Let's take a look at them a little bit closer here. You can see the shoe building. Oh, it just looks so, so nice, doesn't it? It looks very nice. I mean, it does use the artisan building with like, it's basically just the buildings that are spliced into each other, essentially, is what it is. But he did such a good job of just making it look very neat and interesting. And I love these looks on these buildings right here. Fantastic job. Yeah, absolutely fantastic job right there. You can find these under the worker tab. They do unlock at workers, even though I probably 
personally wouldn't build them until artisans uh, just because they do look a little unique there's nothing special about them they still take the standard amount of time to produce uh, the bakery still takes one minute sausages still takes one minute and these shoes also take one minute. So very easy ratios and everything. They are improved by electricity. In terms of workforce, uh, I don't actually have these built in uh, an actual town. This is in creative modes just so I could look at them. But they will take a little bit of worker workforce. Not a big deal. So spruce up, so spruce up your cities a little bit with these new buildings from Alt Mark Willy 1. So last but not least, we have the Imperio Shipyard by Finchin 1800. So the Imperio Shipyard adds a new shipyard into the game. It unlocks at 700 workers, and it gives you all these different types of ships you can build. It's actually really cool. We have small pirate ships, a uh, Grande do Imperio, uh, a, a, a Bates ship, Eli's Jailer ship, the Blue Angel, Her Majesty's Britannia class, a refrigerator ship, a paddle steamer, an old fishing boat, the RMS Leviathan, the White Star class, small motorboats, an Ice Fox, an Arctic Lady, a Mateo's boat, and the Wellerman. Yes, the Wellerman comes with the sugar tea and rum. I'm not going to do the little cheerful little ditty. Uh, I'm not going to sing for you guys, sorry. But anyways, yeah, it adds all these little ships. And a lot of it's just for flavor and fun. Although some stuff, like the Royal Princess Liner right here, is honestly like a combat-oriented person's wet dream. This is a six-slot ship with four item slots has a damage of 52 and 4,000 hit points. This is honestly a terrific ship for being able to go around and sell stuff. It actually has a faster top end max sail speed than a clipper. So yeah, the Royal Princess Liner is very, very nice. Again, this unlocks at only 700 workers uh, and gives you a very powerful ship that you could use uh, to be able to go around and do your trade routes and everything. Obviously, they do have costs. I'm in creative mode, so I can't see that right now. Uh, so I'm not sure what the cost of the ships and stuff are. So maybe the cost is a little prohibitive. But, you know, if you've got a couple of trade routes going near pirates that you just can't, uh, you know, the waypoints and stuff won't get you away from them on your trade routes and everything, or you're at war with somebody, hey, the Royal Princess Liner might not be a bad idea. You could also do, like, the Wellerman right here. Uh, it's a little bit slower than a Clipper, but it does have a damage per second of 35. Oops. The uh, the Abate ship ha is pretty decent. So, yeah, lots of fun little options right here. The, 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 the refrigerator steamer, I'm not sure of the usefulness of it. Uh, again, six slots and four item slots, that's not bad. It does use the reefer, but I don't know if it gets the same reefer... Um, ability of going faster in between regions. It's, it's just a fun little ship. Uh, this guy right here is actually kind of cool looking. really like the look of this thing right here. It's the whaler ship from the whaling building in the Arctic. And we get that as just its own little thing. Four slots, three item slots, and a very lovely little ship that you could use exclusively in the Arctic to have it match the theme of the zone with all the, the frost and snow on it. So... Yeah, very fun little mod, lots of fun little boats, even tiny little motorboats that don't go super fast and can't hold much of anything. But you know, if you're tired of, if you want a few little cute little boats roaming around and going in between your islands, hey, there you go. There's some cute little ships. So yeah, big thanks to Finchin 1800 for the Imperio Shipyard. Some fun options for all of you guys who just love having more ships and stuff in your game. Go check that one out and leave it a thumbs up if you like it. And that's it, guys. There's some new mods that have come out on mod.io in the last month or so that caught my eye. There's quite a few other mods that have come out. Uh, so if you're interested, go check the rest of them out over on the mod browser in the game. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and everything. It does help with the algorithm. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.